Hi, I'm John Rose, the developer of FluxMonkey Reloaded. In this video, I want to show you some fun stuff you could do if you ever wanted to programmatically create your FluxMonkey tests. So instead of using the UI, we're going to use a little program I wrote and will be up on my blog that goes through and essentially spits out the XML so that we can open the test items back up in our console and we'll see them all there and be able to run. So here's our target app, pretty simple. It's got these different panels and then these show buttons and clear. And so some common things that we could generate across those activities like many applications do. Now the other application I have up here is this generate with just the generate test button. So let's go look at him real quick. So he's kind of intended to be a one-time use throwaway type thing, but he has the FlexMonkey library in him. So he's able to, um, I'm gonna go from the bottom up here. He's able to do things like instance a pause monkey command, which is the internal object that represents a pause or a verify monkey, verify property monkey command, and so on. So a lot of the actual model classes for FlexMonkey we're using to create the tree. And then we can just use uh, FlexMonkey's APIs for spitting out XML. So we reference uh, his guy. So we don't have to go and learn the scheme and all that. We just talk to the objects. Uh, create the XML and then do our own save to the directory. And then that part's pretty straightforward. If you're ever going to do this, I think you would pretty much use that copy and paste, and then you'd have to write your own logic of what are those tests you want to create programmatically. So in our case, we're going to create some things that go through the different tabs and check the test, test, te check the text that should show up after a click or whatever and do a clear in those things. And we've got our hard-coded output, output directory. And we are using a XML to drive this. Um, when you check out the project, you know, just for ideas, you may want to do that. You may not want to do that. It just all depends on where your logic for how you would generate them would come from. So now let's go run this guy. And I'll, he'll just tell us he's done. Okay, so we're done with him. We're going to go back to FlexMonkey. And we'll close down FlexMonkey and reopen him so he can pick up, pick up the new XML that was written out. And now he has a bunch of test items, so we are making progress. Come a little smaller so we can see everything with the small screen resolution. All right, let's put him over here and run him. Oh, like those aren't connected. Let me relaunch that guy. That's not the guy I want. There we go. So we'll launch our test app. And let's see, do they see each other now? Yeah, now he's connected, we get the play button. So I'll push play and move him over just so he can see things. Screen resolution turned down for screencast. So we see him go through each tab, validate, clear, set him back at one. So he ran 32 tests, everything's green. So pretty nice, quick and dirty way if you had a large, uh, you know, say data-driven app or knowledge tree of where things are going where you could really bootstrap your tests. Um, also just a fun way to show you some of the internals of how FlexMonkey works. So hopefully that's cool and you enjoyed that. Um, you can get the sample projects on my blog, GorillaJohn.com. Thank you.